Alex, uh, you're a philosopher of biology and have worked in, intensively and in philosophy of mind. I've uh, been very much involved in philosophy of mind, kind of a novice in philosophy of biology. So I, w I wonder, we could, you and I could talk about philosophy of mind and consciousness, uh, you know, uh, uh, un until uh, the Messiah comes, if you believe that the Messiah <laughs> is going to come. <laughs> <laughs> but what I just want to ask you this one question. I, what can the philosophy of biology contribute to a philosophy of mind, particularly consciousness? So there are these issues about reductionism and philosophy of mind. Okay, the standard orthodox view is called um, um, physicalist anti-reductionism. It says the mind is the brain. Most, most of us philosophers of, of psychology are physicalists. But there's also this insistence that the mind has causal power mm -hmm. that is independent of and can't be reduced to the causal powers yeah. of the, the neuro... It can't be reduced, but, but not independent of. In well, so sense. this is the schizophrenic character <laughs> yeah, of the yeah. orthodox right, view. Right, right, right. I agree that with that. People want to have their cake and eat it too. They yeah. want to say there's only one kind of stuff in the world, physical stuff, yeah. but there's a role in... Psychology is a domain, and psychology is a science for the attribution to, the, to conscious experience and to other cognitive activities of real causal powers that cannot be cashed in for are strongly emergent from the physical, from the electrochemistry of the brain. So strongly okay? emergent means cannot, in principle, be reduced right. to, in, in an explanatory way. Yes, exactly. And that's the orthodox position. Now, one of the things that the philosophy of biology has to contribute to that debate is we saw the same kind of argument in the, the, the alleged irreducibility of the gene to the, to the macromolecule, hmm. okay? And that irreducibility was ultimately, I think, unraveled by work of philosophers of biology thinking about reductionism. Hmm. And many of the lessons that have been learned in that story are applicable to the strategies for and the understanding of the relationships between descriptions of the brain at the level of cognitive psychology and descriptions, descriptions of the brain at the level of cognitive neuroscience. Mm. What that leaves unexplored or at least unsolved uh, is the problem of the subjective qualitative character of experience, what David Chalmers calls the hard problem. Mm -hmm. And there, um, I think th th what I want to say is this. There's the first person point of view that we can take on uh, consciousness and on what it's like to be human as opposed to what it's mm. like to be a bat yes. or uh, 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 Frank Jackson's Mary the color scientist argument. Okay, There's the first person point of view and there's the third person point of view, the point of view of experimental right. inductive science. Right. And Epistemologically, you've got to take your choice. Which are you going to attach greater weight to, the first-person point of view or the third-person point of view? If you attach greater weight to the third-person point of view, then you're pretty well committed to saying eventually we'll be able to solve the hard problem. Right. Okay. And but if you think that the hard problem will never be solved, then what you're saying is that the first-person point of view trumps the third-person point of view. Uh, but the third person point of view, if there is a scientific, would, would have to be able to explain why you feel the first person. Exactly the, right. The first person Precisely right. Point right. of view. The, the, th the scientific point of view, the view from nowhere, is going to have to explain the view from somewhere. And the experience and history of philosophy of biology in, um, in, in how gene, gene ex uh, expression, Mendelian gen genetics, which at one point was just purely what the phenotype looked like, and now we can explain that in terms of macromolecules, is a, uh, a hopeful sign along the way. So it, in one sense, it's, it's, a <clears throat> it's a line drawn in the sand that we've managed to cross, and so maybe right. we'll be able to cross the line and drawn the in the sand. And the argument against that is, is that uh, uh, inner experience is, totally such a, different. Is, su is such a different character, there's nothing else right. like it. Exactly right. right. So there's the progress of science, starts all the way back with Newton, and has so far managed to successfully explain higher levels in terms of lower levels. Right. And then there's this potential stopping place, 
the first person point of view, subjective mm. experience. And it doesn't look like we have any sort of handle at this point on cracking that nut. It's what makes it the hard problem. Okay, and we've got lots of smart philosophers trying to show us why, in Nagel's terms, the reductionist research program doesn't even get a start. Doesn't yeah. even, we don't even know what it would mean right. for physicalism to be right, right about right. consciousness, right? right? right. Uh, and all that, um, that argument really uh, begins with tremendous confidence in the first person point of view. And I lack that confidence and I have much greater confidence in the track record of science, in the principle yeah. of sufficient reason. And my approach to it is that it's hard for me to imagine any physical process that, any physical process that would be in a, a scientific explanation to take a third point of view would, in, in my sense, have to be some kind of an identity theory. Identity theory is one of a whole series of theories, but I think at the end of the line, some, something you would have to say that is, not Nothing. that at, right. that is associated with it or it causes exactly it. Exactly right. It's not a causation thing. It doesn't cause it. It's an identity it. thing. It is an identity thing. No matter where it is, it has to be an identity. Exactly right. And I have not the foggiest way that can and be. And neither do we, <laughs> right, those who are on the other side of this, okay? But does that mean that we should throw our hands up in permanent despair? <laughs> I don't know if it's despair. Well, if you're committed to the scientific point of view, if you're committed to the physicalist point of view, if you are committed to the view that there's nothing but fermions and bosons, then it's a, 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 a council of despair.